This sermon is titled Our Healing. Be enriched as you listen. Today is Supernatural Sunday. Every last Sunday of the month, we spend time um, in meditating on scriptures that remind us that the supernatural work of God, the power of God, uh, is made available to us. So even today, we will take time to meditate on God's word, uh, specifically regarding healing, and believe God to touch our bodies, to touch um, every part of us. So today, I'd like to focus in on the subject of healing, uh, and I'll get right into it. Uh, but before I, I get into the word, um, the reason why you know, I really wanted to speak about this is uh, because sometimes we wonder you know, if it is God's will to heal us. If it is God's will to release healing, especially to our physical bodies. Uh, and so today we will take time to examine the word of God and see what the standard of God's word is regarding this matter. There is an incident in scripture in Matthew chapter 8 when a leper reaches out to Jesus. He's desperate to receive his healing. So in Matthew 8, 1 to 3, uh, it says, When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. It's very interesting because he doesn't, the leper doesn't doubt the ability of Jesus. Uh, he doesn't ask Jesus, can you, will you be able to? Those are not the questions that he puts forth to Jesus. Instead, his doubt is in the area of the willingness of Jesus. So the leper understood that Jesus is able to do it because he's seen him do it over and over again. He must have heard many testimonies from people around him. So he knew that Jesus can do it. But the question he asked Jesus is, are you willing? If you would be willing. And what did Jesus say? Jesus readily exclaimed, I am willing, be cleansed. And that is how this leper received healing uh, for himself. Jesus was willing. God is willing to heal us. God is, it is God's will to heal us. And I will substantiate why I make that statement. It is God's will to heal us. And God is able to heal every part of us. When we see um, you know, the way God has constituted us, the way he has made us, we understand from scripture that we are a tripartite being. We are spirit, we are soul, we are body. And the Bible teaches us that God is able to heal every part of us, uh, our physical self, our soulish realm, even our spirit. Spirit. And God has the power, he is willing to heal every part of us. God has also provided for this healing. Okay, he's already provided for our healing. Though I am focusing more on the subject of healing, you know, we can extend this to other areas where we, we want to see the power of God, our deliverance, our breakthroughs, whatever Jesus has done on the cross for us by faith, we can receive it. God has already provided for our healing. So today we're going to look at five um, reasons why we can stand assured that it is God's will to heal us. The first one is the very nature of God. Okay, are you all with me? Are you ready to journey? Only five points. Okay, so journey with me in the first 
point is that uh, God's nature reveals to us that He is a healing God. Even under the old covenant, we see that God revealed Himself as the God who heals. And He spoke to His people and said, I am the God who heals you. I am the God who heals you. That's how he revealed himself. Now, uh, we may have questions about the source of sickness and disease, but when we consider the scriptures, we find other reasons why um, uh, other places from where sickness and disease arises except from the person of God. So what are some of the causes for sickness and disease? Now we understand uh, from Romans chapter 8 that the earth, the world is corrupted with sin uh, it, and this happened right at the start when man disobeyed God and right from that moment the world is corrupted with sin and we know that sometimes sickness and disease is a consequence of that sin which has already infected this world that we live in. The second reason is that we have an enemy and he is going about like a roaring lion waiting to um, afflict us, waiting to put any form of oppression on us. And scriptures teach us that even sickness is a form of oppression. So there is an enemy uh, and he is the source of sickness and disease in people's lives. And the third reason why you know, we may experience certain discomforts could simply be because of natural causes. You know, this world has laws, the earth has laws, and that's the way God has created it. And even as we, we um, journey through life and, you know, we grow older, uh, the wear and tear and different reasons, but these are natural causes because of which, you know, we may experience uh, certain issues in our physical health. Now, having said these things, one thing that we must settle in our hearts is that, yes, there are so many reasons uh, as to why we experience sickness and disease, but one thing that we must never say is that God put sickness on us because he has made it very clear in his word and revealed himself as the God who heals us. The God who heals us. Now, uh, when we look at the life of Jesus, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 reminds us that Jesus is the express image of God. Express image, in other words, the exact picture. The, if we want to get a glimpse of God, the person of God, the character of God, the will of God, we must look at the life of Jesus because Jesus is the exact image of God. God. So when we look at the life of Jesus, we notice that Jesus was one who was moved with compassion over the people. When he looked at the difficulties that they came with, when he looked at the oppression that they were under, when he looked at the sickness and diseases uh, that, that were upon the people, he was moved with compassion. Matthew 14, 14 says, and he healed them. He healed them. He translated his compassion into healing, the ministry of healing that he manifested. Jesus when he began his ministry in Luke chapter 4, you know, he made this statement concurrent with what was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. He said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, you know, to, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. And that was the mission of our Lord Jesus. He came here to fight the devil. And Jesus did, if we, uh, uh, you know, attribute sickness, disease, calamity to God, then what we're really saying is that God is against himself. But Jesus came to fight the devil. And he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me so that I can carry out this mandate. I can go against the works of the enemy. I can go against the works of Satan. And we read that Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. <coughs> Every time someone came to Jesus for healing, not once can we point out and say that he was unsure, asked them to, you know, leave come back another day or pointed at their personal sin. He did none of that. 
when people reached out in faith, the only response we see of Jesus is Him reaching out and ministering healing. Whether it is for their bodies, whether it was for their minds, He reached out and He released healing upon them. There were different ways in which He ministered. Sometimes He commanded the sickness and it left. Sometimes He rebuked. Sometimes He laid hands. But sometimes uh, He asked them to do certain things. And there were other times when people came, like the woman with the issue of blood, searching for Jesus and just wanted to touch the hem of His garment. But wherever there was faith, whichever means Jesus used, there was healing. There was a manifestation of deliverance, the power of God. And this is Jesus for us. So in the nature of God, we don't see Jesus or God afflicting people with sickness and disease. Jesus came to overthrow the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil, 1 John 3, 8 says. And that is the mandate that Jesus carried. And that is the great commission that he has given us. So in the nature of God, we know that it is God's will for us to be healed, to be whole in every way. Here's the second thing that I want to talk about. It's about the finished work of the cross. The finished work of the cross. Now we know that Jesus came to pay the price for our sins. He came so that all our sins are forgiven. But Psalm 103 says, you know, He forgives all my sins. He also heals all my diseases. He came to forgive our sins, but He also came to provide healing for every part of our being. Isaiah prophesied many hundreds of years ago about the Messiah, and this is what He spoke. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5, it says, he, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. What Isaiah was saying is that Jesus would do the work of a divine exchange. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He bore our griefs and He carried our sorrows so that in exchange for our griefs, in exchange for our sorrows, He can give us His healing instead. Healing has become our healing because Jesus has carried our griefs and our sorrows. As we study those words in Hebrew, the word grief there is uh, koli, which means sickness, disease, and malady. So Jesus bore our sickness, disease, and every malady. The word uh, sorrow there has to do with our emotional person. And it's the Hebrew word makob, which means pain. It means sorrow. It means grief uh, of our soulish person. So Jesus has already carried our physical um, sicknesses. He's already carried the issues that we face in our soul. And we can position ourselves to receive the healing that He releases through this work that He has done on the cross of Calvary. We see in the same passage, the chastisement for our peace was upon Him. The word peace there is shalom. And shalom is, 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 a, is an all-encompassing word. You know, it's a, it's a comprehensive word. 
It's not just peace of mind, so that you and I can have peace of mind, you know, after riding through the traffic or, you know, some, some equipment is not working and you're so upset, I just want peace of mind, shalom. It's more than that. It's more than that. Shalom is wholeness of spirit, of soul, and of body. And so that is what Isaiah is talking about. He's saying the chastisement for our well-being of the whole person was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. By the stripes that Jesus took, we are healed. Now, how do we know that Isaiah was talking only about physical healing? Now, we can look at Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17, where Matthew quotes, this passage, this very same passage where he talks about, you know, um, uh, the, the carrying of, of our sorrows and our griefs. But he's talking about that in relation to physical healing. You know, he talks about it right after Jesus heals people. So Isaiah was talking about physical healing. And by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Now, I do understand that in our experience, you know, sometimes we experience instantaneous healing. Now, I can testify, there was one women's conference that I went for. For whatever reason, you know, I had this pain in my ankle and uh, I was believing God for instantaneous healing in my body because we talk so much about it and Jesus did it. For Jesus, it was always, you know, one step, be healed and then the, the person could experience it. So I was trusting God for an instant healing in my body that day and I just couldn't walk. There was pain in my ankle, there was pain in my knee and I went for the conference, uh, you know, nevertheless, enjoyed uh, the time there. And they were ministering in the gifts of the Spirit. And so they were calling out different names. And I was saying, Lord, I, I, I don't know. I mean, they're not even calling the condition that I have. But I believe, I believe. You already paid for my sickness and disease. I, I know I can be healed. And I'm just receiving it by faith. And that's what I did on that day. And uh, usually here for our women's conference, on uh, after the last session, we, we tend to have a photograph. And so all the women gather. And we have this one uh, group photograph. When we uh, came in for that photograph, you know, um, uh, they asked some people to kneel down, and I was one of them. And I knelt down, and to my amazement, my, my pain was gone. Like, I know how much I suffered for several weeks, but instantaneously, I don't even know how, what, I cannot explain it, but it was gone from that moment. Uh, and, you know, that, that was just thrilling for me because that's what the Bible talks about and we can believe for healing to take place instantaneously in our bodies because Jesus is already provided for our healing. But there are times that we are pressing in. Maybe there are certain conditions uh, that, that, you know, we are praying about and, you know, we, we, we are battling it out and we don't see healing taking place, uh, you know, in a moment or a couple of days or even a couple of weeks. But I just want to encourage us. You know, our experience uh, can say so many things, but the Bible always says the same thing. The standard of God's word never changes. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. This is a spiritual reality for us to put our faith in and receive from the spiritual reality. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. He's already done whatever needed to be done for us to have our healing. And so you know, we can put our trust in God to receive it and walk in it. In fact, the apostle Peter in 1 Peter 2.24, you know, he talks in the past tense and he says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. And that healing already happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus hung on the cross of Calvary. A spiritual reality that does not change no matter what the sickness what the condition, how difficult the situation. There's only one spiritual reality, and that is Jesus has already paid for us to have divine health and healing and walk in it. So the finished work of the cross reminds us that healing is ours. 
Here's the third reason why we understand that healing is God's will for us. The cross talks of triumph and victory. The victory of the cross is for us. Now Isaiah, in that same passage of Isaiah 53 and verse 12, you know, he, uh, he says that uh, the spoils of this battle that Jesus would fight, he would give it to his people. He talks about that. So uh, what Jesus did on the cross was that battle which he won and he gave us his children, those who believe in him, the spoils, and one of which is healing, healing for every part of us. So Jesus triumphed on the cross. Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, in the latter part of, of this uh, passage shares that Jesus has made a public spectacle of the enemy. Or in other words, he has defeated Satan. Jesus is not trying to defeat Satan, Jesus has not asked us to try and defeat Satan. Jesus has already defeated Satan on the cross. He has disarmed principalities and powers. And scriptures tell us that he has triumphed. He has triumphed on the cross. The book of Hebrews reminds us that Satan who has the power of death, Jesus has defeated him. Jesus has already defeated Satan. So here is the stance, the way we sang this morning, you know, I will stand up, I will not back down. We stand in a place of victory. We can continue to enforce this victory in our own lives. Even if Satan comes against us with any form of oppression or affliction, we can take our position and say, no devil, Jesus has already defeated you. I will give you no place because Jesus has already defeated you. And I enforce my victory in the name of Jesus. As believers, we can take authority in the name of Jesus. Now, don't let the, the devil um, take center stage. Yes, he does. He does come against God's people, but here is the main story. Jesus has defeated Satan 2,000 years ago. So no matter what we face today, we can remind the devil of what is, has already happened. And when we proclaim the truth of what the blood of Jesus has done for us, it also reminds him of his future, his future of eternal damnation. So church, we are victorious. The cross speaks of our victory. Sickness and disease in uh, Acts 10.38, it, 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 it is revealed as an oppression of the enemy. And Jesus came to remove the oppression of the evil one. And so you and I can enforce victory even in the area of, you know, our physical for our physical healing. It could even be in the area of our mind where we can come against the evil one. Um, we can come against fear. We can come against anxiety. We can come against any form of uh, confusion and say, no, devil, God created this world perfect. And God, God's desire for me is that I walk in divine help and healing. So I'm just going to take what belongs to me. I'm victorious because of the cross of Jesus Christ. The fourth reason you know, why we can state that uh, healing is ours is because of the covenant. Now, do we all know that we are part of the new covenant which was established by Jesus and by the shedding of his own blood? The Bible says in Hebrews 8, 6, that this is a new covenant with better promises. It's a better covenant with better promises. So there are many blessings that we can talk about as part of the new covenant that Jesus has established with us. But I just want us to consider uh, one incident uh, when Jesus was ministering to people. This is in Luke chapter 13. And it's about a woman who was crippled. She was uh, bound, bent over. Um, 
and Jesus notices her for 18 years she's in this condition he looks at her and he identifies that she is a descendant of Abraham so the first reaction that Jesus has is hey this is a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound so Jesus was alarmed that a woman who is part of the covenant and we are talking Abrahamic covenant an early covenant that God um, made with Abraham in which there are many blessings but as we study that covenant we don't see healing being mentioned explicitly but even on the basis of the Abrahamic covenant Jesus looks at this woman and he says this is the daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound or how could he how could he bind a daughter of Abraham she's part of the covenant and the full blessings of the covenant and so we see Jesus speak deliverance over her you know in this case it was a demon spirit that had caused her to be crippled and Jesus goes ahead and commands uh, you know deliverance and she's set free and she's able to rise up upright and this really reveals to us the way God honors his covenant Jesus even honored the Abrahamic covenant and released deliverance healing for a bound lady who was suffering for 18 years and today church I want to remind us Jesus has made the new covenant by his blood with us and we are partakers of the better covenant and the better promises of God we can extend our faith and say God you have a covenant with me healing is mine healing is my portion and we can press in in this manner because Jesus has already done it for us and finally the fifth reason that we can claim our healing is because it is a redemption blessing when we talk about the work of Jesus you know we talk about the atoning work of Jesus we talk about the redeem redeeming work of Jesus so Jesus paid a price for us and Paul reminds the Corinthian church he says hey don't you know uh, your body is the temple of God you were bought with a price we have been bought with a price and now that we have been bought with a price by Jesus and the price you know the redeeming blood of Jesus which was shed for us we now belong to the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and now that we belong to this kingdom of Jesus uh, and, and you know Jesus the kingdom of light we are contrary to the kingdom of darkness the kingdom of darkness where the works of uh, Satan his demons the influences uh, you know that they have thrive that's the kingdom of darkness but scriptures reveal to us that we have now been redeemed we have been purchased Jesus has plucked us out of the kingdom of darkness when we were still not born again we were part of the kingdom of darkness he has plucked us out and he has positioned us in his own kingdom the kingdom of his son Jesus Christ so what does this mean for us what does this mean for our healing it simply means that we now belong to Jesus we don't belong to Satan Satan has no claim on who we are Satan has no claim on our bodies legally okay spiritually legally speaking Satan has no claim over any part of who we are and so when we battle against the devil we can say something like I am redeemed I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus my body is redeemed by the blood of Jesus my mind is redeemed by the blood of Jesus my possessions you can talk about your finances and say my possessions are redeemed by the blood of Jesus every part of me belongs to the kingdom of light and Satan you have no authority you have no authority over me 
You have no authority to put sickness and disease on my life. So we can resist. And that's what scriptures talk about. You know, one thing is faith, where we are believing God to receive. But here's the other thing. We've got to battle. We've got to contend. We've got to fight. And this is a spiritual fight that I'm talking about. We battle in prayer. We battle uh, in, in, you know, meditating in God's word and making declarations of the word of God. And even as we battle in that way, we will see the enemy leave and the manifestation of the wholeness that God has for us, whether it be our bodies, whether it be our mind, whether it be anything else that concerns us. Because Jesus has already finished the work for us and he wants us to have you know, what he has provided and walk in it. So church, because of all these reasons, I talked about the nature of God, the finished work of the cross, the victory of the cross, the covenant and redemption blessings. Let's just put our faith in him because it is his will. Even as the leper looked at Jesus and said, if it be your will, if you are willing, Jesus, heal me. Jesus said, I am willing. I can, I have the ability. And here's the second thing, I am willing. I took your sickness and disease on the cross. I am willing. I won the victory over Satan on the cross. I am willing. I have redeemed you, I am willing. And that's what Jesus is speaking to us today. And I wanna encourage us. Maybe some of us are in, in a place of great discouragement. Though we know God's word, you know, we haven't seen um, uh, the fulfillment of, of some of these promises. But I just want to encourage you. You know, Jude says uh, in Jude chapter, there's only one chapter, verse 3, he says, contend for the faith. And I want to apply it to uh, our healing, believing for healing. And I just want to encourage us, contend. Sometimes it's going to take us putting up a fight in the spirit. Pray, declare. Build faith with regard to healing. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And even as we take time in the word of God, faith will arise. And Jesus said, even if you have faith, as little as a mustard seed, you will be able to move mountains. Amen? Let faith arise for healing in this place. Just want to um, invite the worship team to please come up. We've talked so much about healing, but I want to encourage us that the cross has released the power of God on our lives. We have the same Holy Spirit who's ministering to each one of us. And he's the spirit of might. He's the spirit of strength. God's hand is not, um, he is able, in other words, he is able to intervene in every situation and circumstance that concerns us, not just healing. But if you're looking to God for a miracle, if you're looking to God for a breakthrough, if we are looking to God for a turnaround, or we are looking to God for the resurrection of the dead things in our lives, I just want to remind us, the God of healing is the God of deliverance. He's the God of signs. He's the God of wonders. He's the God of miracles. He's the God of breakthroughs. He's the God of turnarounds. He's the God of resurrection. He's the same God who's able to touch our lives and reveal his glory. The time when Jesus turned water into wine and did a miracle, the first miracle that he did uh, at the uh, wedding in, in Cana, we see scriptures revealed there. It says, by doing this, Jesus revealed his glory. God is interested 
in revealing His glory in each of our lives. These supernatural works of God reveal the glory of God. And church, I want to assure you, no matter what your situation, when you invite the Lord Jesus to come and do what only He can do, the glory of God will be revealed through it all. The purposes of God will be revealed through it all. Jesus hasn't changed. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can reach out with our faith and see His glory in our lives. And this is not just for us to enjoy church, but Jesus gave us the great commission. He sent us out to minister to a hurting world. And He said, these signs will follow those who believe. Do we believe? If we believe, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. And that same passage towards the end says, they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. How can they recover? Jesus has already finished the work. Healing is ours. Don't give up. Just touch the Lord with your faith and we will see His glory manifest in our lives. We'll just take some time to worship the Lord after which uh, we will pray together. Healing presence of the Lord is here. The healing presence of the Lord is here. Our God and King, who made everything, is near. He said, Let there be light, and there was. He said, Lazarus, rise and he rose. He said, rise up and walk. And the lame man walked. He made all things new. He is given new sight to the blind. He is giving new strength to the weak. He is healing our body and mind. He makes all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. power over all the darkness he has power over sin and death be healed be healed be healed churches receive it declare it now be Save it now.
eyes The old has passed and gone The kingdom now has come He makes all things new Receive it as we sing it, new eyes New eyes, new hearts, new minds New eyes, new hearts, new minds The old has passed and gone The kingdom now has come He makes all things new Yes, He does Healing presence The healing presence of the Lord is here the healing presence of the Lord is here. Our God and King, He made everything, is near. The healing presence, the healing presence of the Lord is here. The healing presence of the Lord is here. Our God and King, who made everything, is near. Father, we thank you for your healing presence in our midst. Lord, we thank you for touching our hearts this morning. Lord, we thank you for touching our bodies, refreshing, refreshing and strengthening them in you, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for touching our minds. We thank you for the shalom of God. The chastisement for our peace was upon you. By your stripes, we are healed. By your stripes, we were healed. And Lord, this is our declaration. Lord, even right now, we command healing to sick bodies in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask systems to be restored. Lord, we ask that the power of God will manifest even if, Lord, Certain conditions are called incurable. God, we thank you that you are God. And you are the one who has knit us together in our mother's womb. Lord, we declare the victory of the cross. Lord, we declare the power of the cross. And we ask, oh God, that the supernatural power of God will release healing even to incurable conditions, oh God. And Father, we thank you that the work that you do is real. And God, that you will manifest it in such a way that the world will see your glory. I come against every oppression of the evil one. I take authority in the name of Jesus. I command every oppressing spirit. Take your hands off of God's people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim freedom. In the name of Jesus. From oppression of the mind. Bone conditions, bone conditions. bone conditions that people are struggling with for many years and the condition just interferes with daily uh, activities of daily life I speak healing in the name of Jesus a release a release from every demonic stronghold that may be causing some of these conditions be healed in Jesus name Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I want to speak healing for shoulders, 
shoulders, people who've been having stiff shoulders, unable to move it, use it. I command healing to those shoulders in the name of Jesus. I speak refreshing to weary souls. Thank you, God. Thank you for the rain of your presence. Times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Even you are a God who makes a way in the wilderness, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you that you're uplifting the brokenhearted. Lord, you're uplifting those who are bogged down by heavy weights and burdens, oh God. Lord, we thank you because you invite us and say, you come to me. You are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Father, I pray for the refreshing of your spirit upon your people. That Lord, we may rise up with wings as eagles, oh God. Even as we receive that refreshing in your presence, I just feel like God is encouraging some of us to do just that. To be very keen on making time for His presence. And even as we wait upon Him, a change, a refreshing, a transformation from the inside out will begin to emerge and we will see that we are rising up with wings as eagles. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for touching our lives. Thank you for ministering to every heart, every life in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, let needs be met in the name of Jesus right now. Let miracles take place in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, Lord. Gifts of healings, gifts of miracles manifesting right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to invite those who have not um, asked Jesus to come into your life ever to do that now. Uh, Jesus came so that you can have a restored relationship with God. So if you've never prayed that prayer, the prayer of salvation, I want to invite you to do that right now. You can just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. I believe that you are the Son of God. You've taken my punishment on the cross. Lord, I receive the forgiveness that you've given me. I repent of my sins. Make me your child. And teach me to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, could you just let us know that you have. Uh, if you can lift up your hand and indicate to us, that'll be very helpful. Yes, thank you. I see some, I see a hand going up there. Anyone else, if you've prayed that prayer? Just let us know. We have some resources that we want to give you and uh, it'll be great to meet with you and you know um, pray together as well. Even those online, if you've made that prayer, please let us know, our volunteers are there. Thank you. So let's just close with a word of prayer. Uh, before that, if anyone has experienced um, any kind of healing, it could uh, be with regard to your physical health or you feel the power of God, you felt the power of God touching your minds, please let us know. Uh, if you want to check it out, that's fine. You can take some time and uh, you can write to us on testimony at apcwo.org uh, for the glory of God uh, and we, we will celebrate with you for what God has done in your life. Uh, so please remember to do that. Uh, let's all close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we 
thank you for a reminder that you've already won the victory for us. Lord, you've carried our griefs and our sorrows. And by faith, Lord, we receive your healing touch into our bodies, into our lives. Lord, we ask for your kingdom, O oh God, to come powerfully in our midst, God. Lord, we ask for the work of your spirit to be done mightily in our midst, O oh God. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.